thanks so much for coming tonight. My name's Liz, um, and I am a member of the Seattle International Socialist Organization. This is a meeting about the teacher strike, and the Seattle Education Association just released a statement that the teachers are officially on strike as of tomorrow morning. <laughs> Uh, so tonight we've got a couple of teachers and uh, that are going to this is going to be this is the whole strike situation has been like by the seat of our pants loosey-goosey flowing and uh, we are just going to keep in that spirit tonight so uh, we've got a couple of presenters that are going to present on different aspects of the strike there'll be a, a bit of time for some question and answer if folks have been reading the news or aren't really sure what's going on um, in the various proposals that have been shuttled back and forth. Um, but we really want to spend the bulk of tonight being organizers and actually organizing. So we're going to have some time uh, for a community breakout. Um, there's some ideas that have been put forward by some folks in the community, and they're here tonight. So we're going to bring all those ideas together, hopefully. Um, so tonight, we've got a couple of speakers. Oh, and before I kick it off, uh, Rita Green, who's the education chair from the Seattle NAACP, uh, says hello to everyone and she's really bummed that she couldn't be here. She's working tonight because she is busy as I'm sure you can imagine um, but she's very excited about this panel and the things that we could potentially get uh, started organizing tonight and she is committed to being involved in that. So um, more folks that we can utilize over the next couple of days as we mobilize support for the teachers. Um, so Dan Tricoli is a longtime teacher and activist. He'll be speaking for a few minutes. Folks should know Jesse Hagopian. Um, he was, he's a teacher at Garfield High School and he was involved in the MAP boycott. And then at the far end is my new friend Ian, and I believe you teach at Chief South, is that what I heard? And he's also the um, BSU chair, or the BSU advisor, excuse me, um, for the Black Student Union on campus, or on uh, campus at Chief South. So we'll kick it off with Ian. He's going to give us a brief update about exactly why the teachers are striking, what are the, uh, what's in the latest proposal, and we'll give him just a few minutes. Um, you guys will see us wearing mics. That's not, there's no amplification. It's because there's two folks that are taping in the back. Um, so we're gonna be passing this mic around even though it's not helping you here at all. Before we get started, could all the shy students please come to the front, please? This is like how we're trying to get everyone involved. Come on, don't be afraid. The late comers don't wanna go to the front. <laughs> Stand. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to clip this on. Uh, I just got asked to speak a minute ago, so do the best I can and prepare anything. Uh, but I've been talking about this a lot. Um, so we, like um, Liz told us, um, we've just been waiting and waiting. We kind of have had this feeling for the past day or so that this is going to happen. Um, but we just got word and uh, people at Chief South are pretty excited. Um, also a little nervous, we haven't done this before, uh, but we are committed. We had a, a union meeting last week uh, where we had a unanimous vote in support of this strike. Uh, people at Chief South are excited and ready to fight. Um, we just heard that the school board voted to allow for the superintendent to file an injunction against the teachers. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, that just happened in Pasco and the Pasco teachers voted to keep, um, go forward with the strike. I'm sure that teachers in Seattle will do the same. Uh, so why are we striking? <clears throat> well, that's a big question and it, it's, it's based in, the con in this bigger context around uh, the attacks on public education, I would argue. There are some specifics to it, um, and if the district had come with a contract that, w that felt like it was respectful of teachers, uh, then we might not have be standing here right now. Uh, but teachers have just, teachers in Seattle in particular, and I think across the state, have just reached a point where they're not willing to take it anymore. Uh, we've experienced um, over testing of our students, disrespect of the profession, having a very little say in the direction of education and always feeling like we're being told what our job is by people who have not been in the classroom. Um, and I feel like we're done with that. 
Uh, so the specifics are around. So I, I hear that the district moved on the recess. The SEA had demanded 45 minutes of recess. Yeah. Uh, we got 30 minutes. Uh, which is a win and that's uh, precedent setting right for workers for teachers to be demanding to be negotiating at the bargaining table on specific demands that have to do with caring for our kids right um, this is not something that is normally bargained for so that was a real big step forward uh, we're also bargaining to try to get race and equity teams uh, into all of the schools the district has its own Uh, the district has its own top-down policy or plan, that's what they call it. Uh, there's no details available, but they apparently have some plan where they're going to tell us again how to do what we know how to do. We just need the support and resources to do it. Uh, so that is also, I think, precedent setting for Seattle teachers to be demanding that the district deal with the realities of institutionalized racism uh, that we deal with every day uh, in our schools. So we're ready for our fight. Um, and I hope that you guys will give your support. Thank you. Okay. So Dan Tricoli is going to speak next. Okay. Oh. I hate these things. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, all of us are involved in a uh, rank and file caucus in the union called C Social Equality Educators, um, and we put that thing together what like seven years ago. It seems like. Um, and is modeled a lot after what is ha uh, the group that transformed the Chicago Teachers Union, the Caucus of Rank and File Educators. Truth be told, we kind of lifted all of our points of unity from that. We're just like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, I mean, we tweaked it for Seattle, of course, but um, we formed with the same sort of uh, intentions that they did to address all the same things that Ian just laid out. Like these are all the pressures that are happening inside our classroom. Um, you know, one thing recently that happened that sort of exemplifies this is a uh, revolt against Common Core, and it's happening all over the country, uh, but it's really, really high in uh, New York as well as, well, I mean, I think we actually have the record number of opt-outs in Washington State, but there have been a lot in New York too, and the governor there, Governor Cuomo, has recently come out against Common Core because as one parent activist in, uh, on Long Island put it, it's just killing education. It's just strangling all the creativity, all the critical thinking skills, all the kinds of things that actually motivate not only students but teachers to want to teach is just being destroyed in public schools. Um, and so this is the kind of thing and the reason that we formed C. We formed it to introduce progressive social justice in, uh, politics into the union to push that but also to push the union to take more militant stances and more militant action defending public education and teachers. Um, so that was sort of what we had in mind when we did it. And it was a, you know, it was a little bit of a slow go. You know, we started small. Um, and the kinds of things we did, we had an inside outside approach to the union. So inside the union, we'd try to get the union to take certain positions. We'd advocate them, put them forward as new business. Um, and then eventually, as we did last year, run for union positions as well to help strengthen the union by actually participating in structures. But then we also are pretty active um, on the outside of the union, meaning like we get involved in education politics and try to bring people who inv into that stuff who are not in the teachers union uh, because it affects everyone. Like everything that happens to public education has a long-term effect on the community. And um, you know, it obviously involves parents and students who are equal stakeholders, if you will, I hate that word, but equal stakeholders in this struggle. So we try to pull those kinds of people in too. And all that is relevant for how we see sort of the approach to this particular negotiations right now. Like that's exactly how we, we would like to see this kind of thing run. The teachers are taking an initiative, but that doesn't mean that the community has absolutely nothing to say about it and, is, and something at stake in that struggle. And so we're hoping that we can do that tonight, that the point of this is to sort of bring together um, like 
as many forces in the community, whether officially organized or just individuals who are interested in doing it, to actually be part of uh, forming solidarity with teachers, not for the sake, sole purpose of supporting us just because, hey, we're cool, we're teachers, but we're also because, like, what are, well, how do we want, what do we want public education to be? If we don't, we know what we don't want it to be. We don't want to be test factories, but what do we want it to be? And that kind of process isn't going to happen overnight, and people have to get together and sort of figure that out, hammer it out. Um, so I'll just say, like, to, re to interject a few other things into what Ian said in terms of the proposals, C has pushed the in initially, this, this kind of same thing happened in the last negotiations, what, three years ago? Two, three year, two, two. two years ago. Um, where there was, um, a nego you know, negotiations came forward and some of the same things we're fighting against and for now, we're, you know, we had to argue about then. Uh, the difference was I don't think people were really prepared and ready for a strike in some way because in some way, C hasn't really gotten to that point yet. The organi our organization hadn't grown enough and gotten enough people to be as involved that all the members in the union thought, you know what, not only are we pissed off about what's happening in education, but we actually can, we think we can do it. We think we can do something about that. And so pushing over the years, we um, have brought people to that level, but around some of the same issues. So right now, one of the things we really want out of our contract is this um, student growth data that is put into our evaluation and it's based upon like another some sort of ridiculous algorithm that a lot of places use um, we don't quite call it the same thing value-added model but it is very similar to that it's irrelevant it's not based on any sort of accurate and reliable data and it it doesn't inform your teaching practice at all but it can be very arbitrary and switch you from one type of evaluation to another based just solely upon like random events and random things that happen with students like if they didn't do very well that year in the test because maybe it's a new test like we have a new test the SBAC which they estimate a good number of students will fail or you know all sorts of things can affect how students do on tests that kind of thing is in our evaluation system I mean try to think for a second what that would be like that'd be like I can't explain to you like the <laughs> if you had car salesman being evaluated by someone you know who they stole the car to and thinks that car sucks you know it's like it's just weird. It's even crazier than that, in my opinion. So anyway, we wanted that out of our contract now, but it was introduced in our contract last time. It's a struggle. It's a continuing struggle from that whole thing. And so now I think there's a there's a whole different view uh, uh, basis for us to mount that struggle. Um, part of it is like what C has done. Part of it is just ordinary like. Uh, the ground, the political ground shifting, and more and more people thinking that that's a possibility as the revolt against Common Core and other types of things have actually given people confidence that there's not only something that they could do about it, but that th this thing just totally doesn't make sense. We've given it enough effort, um, enough like time to pan itself out, and all sort of corporate education forms have just not worked. And then, of course, one of the really big thing that's helping, I think, the momentum in this struggle is the struggle statewide against the legislature for not really fu fully funding education. And that was really, really important because when we went on that one day strike in the spring, that gave people an idea of like organizationally, what would this look like? If we did go on strike, what would, what would I be doing? You know what I mean? Where would we be going? Who's going to pull things together? And that has been very, very useful. People are very confident now that this is going to happen. We did it again a couple days ago. What was it? Wednesday, I think, before our Thursday strike vote. We did another big picket wasn't quite as big where we went downtown, but we did the same sort of structures and people knew how, how to get this kind of thing done. Um, so that's the, that's the sort of thing that we want to broaden those lessons out to every, like everyone here should go visit Picket Line this week. Like we're on strike, it's official, we got the word only a minute to go. Um, we will be on strike tomorrow. And so every single person should find a, a time or a place or a way to go to a picket line tomorrow or in the next couple of days. Um, because it's like an invaluable lesson and also teachers just want to see people out there and know that they're getting that kind of support from the community. So I'll leave it at that. I just want, that should be what we try to accomplish here tonight. Well, thanks everybody for coming tonight. This is an incredible night in my life. Uh, as Dan said, we formed the Social Equality Educators like seven years ago, and we've been building steadily um, hours and hours of work to try to argue with our colleagues that we don't have to roll over, that we can stand up 
and fight for uh, our profession, that we can fight for the kids in our community, that we can fight and transform public education to make it something relevant to our students' lives, to make it something that will help our students deal with the problems that they're facing rather than just filling in another bubble to enrich a testing company, right? And the steady work that we have done uh, over the course of those years, uh, to me, really culminated in a general membership meeting we had on Thursday, and it was electric. For those teachers in the room, uh, when thousands of us entered the hall and we could see from the rafters uh, to the floor uh, at Benaroya Hall, the, the power that existed in that room that represented over 100 schools across Seattle and every educator there uh, to decide whether uh, we were getting a fair contract that was going to help our students um, or not was an incredible moment. And when the, the chair called for the vote after a rigorous uh, discussion and debate, uh, the feeling was really indescribable to hear I ring out throughout the hall, um, just thousands of voices saying this is our moment to take a stand. But as beautiful as that moment was, it was much better when they called for the no vote and there was absolute silence. And we then erupted knowing that it had just been a unanimous vote. So this isn't a, a teacher strike that we're entering lightly. This is a unanimous decision of the Seattle Education Association. Every single educator that was at that meeting says that the district has offered us a contract that disrespects educators and that's gonna undermine public education and erode uh, the schools for, for our kids. And every educator said, we're willing to shut the school system down if that's what it takes to get the schools our children deserve. And I'm really proud to be a teacher at Garfield because, you know, in, in 2013, Bulldogs, <laughs> In 2013, we launched the MAP test boycott and gave people a whole new paradigm for what uh, educator and activism could, could be, right? For a, a whole new idea for the power that we had as workers and as teachers when we refused to give a test that we knew was harmful, that wasn't aligned to the standards. So we were being judged as educators on a test that wasn't measuring what we had taught, um, that was uh, reducing the intellectual process of teaching and learning to a score instead of helping to nurture creativity, imagination, and critical thinking. And after being threatened with a 10-day suspension without pay, uh, they had to back down because of the solidarity from the PTA that voted unanimously to support, the student body government that voted unanimously to support, and the boycott spreading to to Ian's High School and to many other schools around Seattle. And that's the same solidarity that it's gonna take us to win this strike right here. So I'm so glad you're with us tonight so we can figure out uh, after we have this discussion, the real work is gonna be us breaking into uh, um, you know, a group and really figure out how can we create a, a strike support committee that can um, help the teachers win these righteous demands that we've put forward today. Um, and I think that the demands that Ian and Dan laid out for our union are really an incredible set of demands. Our union has never uh, put forward a set of demands that goes beyond wages and benefits. I think we all educators in this city deserve uh, a, a increase in wages as, as the cost of living rises uh, beyond what we, we can uh, cope with in this city. Um, but to see the union also take up issues like a race and equity committee in every building, um, to caseload caps for counselors, right? At Garfield, there's 100 homeless students, right? How is a counselor with 400 students on their caseload going to help a student find a place to live, cope with difficult family situations and abuse uh, when they are so overloaded? And 
So to see our union stand up to demand the right for kids to play, uh, a human right, I think, uh, for kids to be able to have free play, to learn to solve problems on the playground together, um, uh, what was just absolutely incredible. And I think that um, these issues that the union is taking up highlight the fact that you can't talk about education in a vacuum. You can't talk about our schools without talking about the broader society that they exist in. Because our kids uh, at school are coming to school uh, from families that can't afford to live in this city with a, an absolute crisis uh, in affordability. And so we also have to talk about linking the education system to affordable housing in this city, right? We also, uh, we can't talk about education in, in this city uh, without talking about health care and the fact that our kids are coming to school uh, sick with uh, underfunded, um, uh, underfunded health care programs in the schools and out uh, of the schools. Uh, and so we have to take up uh, the, the fight for health care for everybody. Uh, you can't talk about educating our kids in the schools today without talking about police brutality and police terror because it is our kids, especially our black and brown kids who are going out of school and are being profiled, they're being harassed, they're being beaten uh, by, by the police. And so we have to uh, be able to connect this struggle uh, and the power that educators have to make a whole new agenda around education to a much broader set of demands that could, that could actually help transform the political landscape and build a society uh, on, uh, on the basis uh, of social justice. And I think that's, that struggle uh, is really um, Ha holds great potential in, in education because our schools are quite contradictory. We're told that education is the place that if you go and you hit the books uh, and you work hard, you know, you can achieve anything in this country. And the reality, though, that I've seen at Garfield is that our, pa our past two black student union presidents, two of the most dynamic, incredible leaders that I've seen uh, in my time as, a, as an educator, both had to uh, drop out of college because they couldn't afford uh, the skyrocketing prices um, that, it, that it costs in, in this country. And so that, that, uh, that lie is being exposed, that actually our schools are not a place that are the great equalizer, that are uh, allowing everybody to succeed in our society. Our schools are actually uh, a place that are far too often reproducing uh, a dramatically unequal society, a society that's organized around profit, right? A capitalist system that uh, believes that um, our, our kids should be trained to be low-wage workers in, uh, in, in fast food and, and low-wage industries. Um, and, and actually, we as educators have to, I think, be in this struggle for the immediate contract demands that we have right now, but I think we need to also link up uh, this struggle with, with the broader fights um, in, in this city, in this country, and really uh, around the world. Right now, um, educators and teachers in Kenya are on strike, and I'm going on uh, Al Jazeera program on Thursday to, to do a roundtable forum with um, educators in Kenya, in Pakistan, in India, in, in British Columbia, and we're all facing the same struggle. Uh, in every one of these places, the corporate education reformers, the testocracy, uh, are trying to reduce our schools to test prep centers. They're trying to privatize our schools to uh, eliminate public schooling altogether and, and actually um, do privatized charter systems uh, where public funds go to, to, to fund uh, uh, schools that are run, run privately. And I think that we need to link our struggles with, with those educators around the world that are fighting for a different vision of what our school system could be, a place that actually helps children uh, fulfill their, their human potential and helps them identify problems in, in, in their community, in their society, in their world, uh, and helps them organize to, to fight back against those problems. And that's I think uh, the potential that this strike holds, and I think when you uh, walk the picket line tomorrow, you're gonna talk to a lot of educators whose uh, expectations have been raised and who actually uh, 
can begin to, to talk about the power we have to change the debate in education and why it would make sense to link that up with, with much, much broader struggles. So uh, I hope that we can take questions now and, and uh, really understand what's at stake in this fight and then get out and, and organize the solidarity and support it's gonna take to help teachers win uh, the schools our children deserve. Thank you. So the law, as we hear, the law is silent on it, so it's not guaranteed. The law doesn't guarantee that teachers have the right to strike. It also doesn't prohibit them from striking. So this injunction is just a scare tactic, right? It's a tactic to try to tell people that they're breaking the law and people try to, try to get people to listen to a judge. I don't know who, I don't know exactly how the vote went. I did hear that Marty McLaren voted for this motion, which we were... Uh, disappointed in. I heard it was um, all I, except for Peters who voted nay, and Patu abstained. It's just the, they say the claim for this kind of the claim for the injunction is usually uh, the the strike is doing harm to students. Which okay, students should be in school. No one's debating that. Um, the thing is, they should be in quality schooling, mm -hmm. and the cuts and all the types of things that the school, the school district, if you value the work of teachers, maybe, just maybe, you should throw them more than 2% a year in a pay raise. Uh, and that's the insulting offer they gave us in the late hour of mid to late August. Not like they started this sucker off in May being like, how about 2%? It was 2% to our a challenge to our 7%. Mind you, we haven't gotten a cost of living increase in over six years. So I'm just saying it belies the whole idea that harm to students is the main concern of the school board when they're trying to force uh, striking educators back to work. Okay, so uh, a couple things. When you, have, when you think about like what it's true, the SEA, the union, hasn't really been doing a lot to involve the community. Uh, there are some other teacher union locals that have done this very well. Chicago laid it out. They started off with this like uh, in their last big thing. If you remember, they were on strike. This was like three, four years ago. Um, you could tell I'm not good with time, which makes me a great history teacher. But anyway, um, <laughs> like they had this document they made called the schools that our Chicago students deserve. They took a long time. They, had, they did a lot of research. I mean, this thing is thick. And they put forward, they backed up their demands with like research and like not just national research, but local re research on like how it would affect the Chicago schools, how it would improve learning for Chicago uh, students. And that model was emulated to a greater or lesser degree by some other locals like in Portland and uh, St. Paul. And they involved the community early on in negotiations. But overall, that's not happening in, in teachers' unions. And part of the thing is that strategies among unions about how to struggle have been largely dominated by a model in unions called the partnership or business union models. That is that whatever is good for the employer is good for us too. And it's an assumption that like the employer is not trying to screw the employee all the time. And that's the kind of lesson we have to teach people. You know, it's like we have to relearn that lesson. And unfortunately, our union leadership, I, I'm just saying my union leadership, I'm saying Union leadership nationally, all over the U.S., has generally still follows this model, and it's a disaster. And so it's not a surprise to me that they don't really, that's slow to getting the strategies to win. Yes, have a big rally. When are we going to do that? Oh, we're not sure yet. We're involve the community. Oh, what's, what are we going to do? So some of it necessitates like activists, grassroots activists like us getting together and doing some of that stuff. So I'll just say on the parent support, there has been spontaneous groups of people who just parents, some parent launched a petition that Steve mentioned. There's a parent group called Bread for, so soup, Soups for Teachers. And you could check it out on Facebook, and they've been delivering soup and, and meals to like uh, the negotiating team for the last like week or so. I mean, this is like great stuff. We want to take that and blow it up, and the union should be helping to do that. And you know, but it's a slow thing. We, the our union has been on strike for 30 years to the day. 
30 years. Like that is a long time for people to lose that institutional knowledge about how to do this stuff and we have to rebuild it. So I totally agree with you and it's, you know, we just have to have a little patience with our, with the union, but also with the community too. We have to work, we have to work at this. We have to like, ar like make patient and consistent arguments with people. Yeah, um, Leela asked about, are we pro strike? Um, and I would say absolutely we're pro strike because we are with a school district that has uh, been undermining public education and destroying uh, our ability to, to help um, you know, transform kids' lives. And we've seen that this school district is under federal investigation for suspension rates of black students that are four times the rate of white students for the same infractions, right? And they want to they they want to resist a race and equity committee um that you know they should be mandated to have that by uh by the that should be the court intervention um given how they're uh, uh given how institutional racism has just been laid bare by that um so we hope that these uh, race and equity teams can figure out why are these suspension rates so high in the, each school and uh, begin to work towards restorative justice models like you were talking about the problem if the district just mandates restorative justice from the central downtown office uh, it's not going to happen because people have to believe in it they have to understand it they have to know um, how it, the structures work but also like why it's important to abandon zero tolerance uh, discipline that is pushing uh, especially black and brown children out of school uh, and leading to higher dropout rates in those communities and that has to be organic process from each building and it's my hope that these types of race and equity committees could begin to tackle that very question uh, and transform the what discipline looks like and I'm also for the strike because I've seen what workers power looks like at Garfield High School we didn't go on strike but we struck against uh, aspect of our job a particularly pernicious a aspect of our job one that was uh, humiliating and degrading to education and that was the inundation of standardized testing in our schools and we refused to do it and it wasn't just that we defeated the superintendents uh, uh, saying he was going to suspend us and it wasn't just that we got rid of the map test that he actually um, canceled the test for all high schools altogether uh, because of that collective action but it's what's happened since then at garfield high school so last year at the beginning of the school year they said they were going to remove one teacher from garfield high school they said you you have till monday and then you guys get to decide which one of you is gone there just isn't the money for every teacher in your building uh, and we said absolutely not Our, we already have uh, jam-packed classrooms and so the entire building emptied of every single teacher and every single student walked out and held a press conference on the front steps and said uh, we won't leave 150 kids without a class some of whom won't graduate uh, we reject this policy and lo and behold <laughs> the school district found the money and we <laughs> and they realized that, uh, that our community was going to stand strong right and why did we do that action because we had learned the the power of collective action we we knew that when we stand together they can make any threat they want but the the reality is the school system doesn't work without our labor and um, they can't uh, if we know that they can't back us down and that's what the teachers in Tacoma the lesson that that um, uh, that Steve raised uh, the courts did file an injunction against the strike in 2011 against the teachers in Tacoma and uh, while the teachers were on strike, the, the judge said every single teacher is going to get a $10,000 fine if they remain on strike. So the union convened a general membership meeting to decide whether they should keep the strike going. And in fact, the teachers of Tacoma voted at a higher rate, some 95% to stay out on strike uh, despite that threat and not a single teacher was fined because they can't fine every single person they can't run the schools without us and as long as we have the community support and, and we have an understanding of our collective power um, 
you know, we will win this struggle. So then it's a question of how we get that community support and how we stay strong. I think a mass rally is, is uh, absolutely needed. And, you know, there's several people in this room who are on the executive board of, of our union, Dan Tricoli here, um, and a couple other people here can try to push for that inside the union on the executive board that we need a rally. I think the idea of holding a forum, I know uh, Shama has wanted to hold a forum at uh, City Hall, and I think um, if we for form a strike solidarity committee tonight, we should talk about how we could build a community forum that could get a much bigger room together of folks from all over Seattle uh, to talk about how we're going to support this this battle for labor, uh, this battle for education, uh, this battle for racial equity um, that's so critical that this strike wins because there's so much at stake right now, right? If we lose, then all of those issues, labor, uh, uh, education, race and equity are set back. But if we win, right, workers in every sector uh, of, of Seattle will, will see the power that we have. And, and I think all the grassroots movements fighting for uh, better wages, the grassroots movements fighting for Black Lives Matter uh, will gain great confidence that these are issues that can connect with uh, the broader society and that we actually have power to, to, to make um, this change. So I'll, I'll leave it there. And I will just build on what Dan and Jesse said about uh, restorative justice and the race and equity teams. Uh, we should be clear that, uh, as this guy was kind of alluding to, that that creating a uh, not racist public school system is not in the cars in a in a capitalist economy, right? So. The best that we can do is to create and use the public schools as a site for struggle, for anti-racist struggle, right? So this the race and equity teams, I think it's a, it's, it's a step forward, right? This is a good thing that the union has put this forward, but it is a weak proposal as far as I'm concerned, right? Like we have a race and equity team. We were a chief self, we were on the forefront of pushing this work forward in the district. We have a race and equity team at, Chief Self. It doesn't, it's a group of people that meet and talk about, and we're organizers, so we make things happen in the building. But for instance, our principal just came to us today um, and put forward this new policy about uh, off campus lunch passes, right? And she had never brought that to the race and equity team to talk about. And this is like a, a policy that where you have to get a, a sticker on your ID in order to leave campus. Now, when there's, and, and you have to maintain a certain GPA in order, to, in order to maintain that, right? And then you can't be late to class, et cetera. Now, when, when there's three security guards standing outside of the school and there's 700, 800 students waiting, trying to leave to go to Westwood, they're not gonna stop everybody, right? They're gonna make decisions about who to stop. So this is like a, a clear, place where a race and equity team would have looked at that policy and said, no, this isn't going to work. Like this is going to reproduce the racist realities that we're dealing with every day. So, so the race and equity team, it's a good start. It's a way to discuss these issues. If we can move more towards a restorative justice, um, but restorative justice in itself is kind of a buzzword, right? You got the city council talking about restorative justice and, you know, so, so, so my point is that this is just the beginning or it's not even, it's a continuation of a struggle, right? We have shifted the discussion, but it's gonna take pressure, activism, organizing from teachers, from communities coming together um, to move, continue to uh, build the struggle. I'll just say a quick word about uh, Bill Gates because the richest man in the history of the world is using his wealth um, uh, to try to destroy our public schools and to get rid of teachers unions altogether. And uh, his friends in the 1% have joined him in this uh, all out war on public education. Um, and really I think since, especially since the Great Recession um, and their plan to restructure the economy based on a really low wage uh, economy, they, we, the schools basically, they see as a way to prepare uh, young people 
to lower their expectations, to be disciplined and take orders, uh, and not to question. And that's really what uh, the Common Core and high stakes testing uh, leads um, people across the country uh, to do. And so this, this strike is really uh, about um, reclaiming the per what the public schools can be and about defending uh, teachers unions and, and unionism uh, all together and I think that um, we can show that uh, the power of solidarity is more powerful than than all the billions of dollars that that he has in the bank um, and so I hope that we can break out now and and actually figure out how to organize that solidarity and help this strike win